you here this morning. What a beautiful time of year. I, I understand the temperature is going to get up there a little bit today. It might be a good day to spend outside. But first, but first, we're going to spend some time in the presence of the Lord. As we're coming into this Easter season, one of the things that we're wanting to do here at Hopewell is to just take some time to meditate on and internalize what it is that this season is all about, to really think about and, and experience what Jesus has done for us. Last week, we took a little extra time in praise and worship. Today, it's um, our time to have communion, but we're going to do that a little bit differently today. We're going we're gonna to actually take some time to uh, savor that and spend a little bit more time with the communion. We have a guest speaker today, Aaron Durstein from Eagle's Wings is here. He is a, a son of our church, uh, was raised in this church and is now ministering internationally. He's going to come, he's going to bring a brief word and then minister in music as we have communion. But first, let's stand together. Let's enter into the Lord's presence in worship. Lord, we invite you this morning. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And Lord, we, we don't want to just experience that with our minds, but we want with our bodies, our whole hearts, to enter in to that experience of knowing you and who you are. So Lord, we lift ourselves up to you today as a sacrifice as we enter into worship. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Let's worship the Lord together.
surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone. Sing that with me. You unravel me with a melody. 
surround me with the song oh, Lord, of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Sing it out. Declare it with me. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because I am a child. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name, calls your name. I've been born again into your family. For your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave. Sing it to him. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because I am a child of God. Oh, I'm your child, God. Oh. I'm no longer a slave to 
in December I had this dream where the Lord showed me the body of Christ uh, laying down like dead and the um, this wicked man over it which I knew is the one world order who was just intimidating the church and just keeping her in fear and just you know just overwhelming I've been praying that the church rise up all morning I just keep seeing the Lord came and he reached her, his hand out to raise his church up. No longer to be intimidated. No longer to walk in fear. I feel like today is a, is a shift. That there, there's a change going on in the body of Christ. And we will not be intimidated by the enemy. We will not be intimidated by the things that have come in against us. Even through our government in the past, we will no longer be intimidated. We will rise up. And the spirit and the power of the living God will come. It will be manifest. It will come. He will bring healing. He will bring restoration. And he will move by the power of his spirit. So beloved, be encouraged. changes. Nothing can stay the same.
Lord, we love you. We worship you. Lord, in this moment, we bow not only ourselves, but our hearts before you. Lord, as you walk into this room, we change. We become conformed to your image and your likeness way God intended from the very beginning that we should be. Jesus, we see that image in you and you draw it out of us. Come, Lord Jesus. Welcome into this place. Welcome into our hearts, into our homes, into our spheres of influence. Welcome, Jesus. Come and change. Transform. Lord, establish your rule and reign, your kingdom in us and among us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we worship you. And we welcome you. Hallelujah. Welcome to Hope Ball Christian Fellowship this morning. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Before you're seated, if you would turn and Greet someone, and I'd like to uh, dismiss the children right away to go to Children's Ministry, Children's Church. Uh, they will be coming back during the service, but uh, all the more reason why we'd like to see them have some time in their classrooms.
Welcome to Hopewell. Whoa. It's a little hot. Welcome to Hopewell Christian Fellowship this morning. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Pastors Kurt and Anita are traveling this morning. They are at Pat and Mary Wilson's Church, Living Truth in Christiana, PA. And uh, so we wish God's blessings to them and that church uh, there, one of our Hopewell Network churches. Uh, I did want to mention, though, that uh, there you will find some of these flyers on the back uh, table there. Uh, Pastors Kurt and Anita will be traveling in just, well, about a week and a half. They're going to be leaving for Moldova, where uh, Joyce and Daryl Henson um, have been ministering in Eastern Europe for a number of years now. For the first time, they're going to be gathering pastors from all over Eastern Europe, the churches that they've been ministering in, and they're going to have one central conference in Moldova for mutual encouragement and just to minister to one another and see what the Lord will do. And they've invited uh, Pastors Kurt and Anita to be their guest speakers for this very first conference that they're holding. Well, part of that, uh, part of that arrangement is since uh, finances are not exactly plentiful in Eastern Europe, they are raising their own airfare to go there. So you can pick up a newsletter in the back, and if you would uh, be able to uh, give something, pray for them. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a, a wonderful time, a, just a real sense of expectation, not only ministering to churches in Eastern Europe, but when they come together and minister to one another. There's a powerful dynamic that happens there. Uh, also want to mention um, that this Tuesday night is our first Tuesday of the month, so the focus is on healing prayer. If you would like to Come and receive prayer for healing or come and pray for the sick. Uh, that'll be Tuesday evening um, over here in the meeting place. Wednesday evening is a prophetic meeting. They've been going through the book Waging Prophetic Warfare by Jennifer LeClaire. And in addition to that, Pastor Kurt will be speaking this Wednesday evening praying for impartation of tongues. I want to mention that we have pictorial directories, which are finally, finally available and if you haven't already picked up one per family, one per household, if you would do so in the lobby. Um, also, uh, this being the Easter season, we have our traditional youth fundraiser of Easter eggs available in the lobby. So um, as you don't, don't avoid picking up materials on the table because uh, there's Easter eggs right there. And uh, they will be glad to give you a little sample. Um, the hardest part might be choosing which flavor you want, but um, all of the proceeds of that go to help with uh, youth, youth ministry and, and especially youth, youth trips, missions trips and, and the like. Also, um, uh, there's flyers in the foyer for fundraiser for Chosen 300. Uh, Chosen 300 is our ministry. Once a month we serve meals for the homeless in Pottstown. They are doing, that ministry is doing a five-mile walk on April 22nd. The information's in the lobby. Another thing that we have coming up, four years ago, we did a dramatic presentation. Pamela uh, came to us just a couple of weeks before Easter and said, I got this, this great idea. Our dancers have been working on it. Let's see if we can pull it together by Easter time. Well, we did. We did it four years ago. It was held over there, and uh, we had a full house, and, and it generated such excitement and enthusiasm that we said, you know what, someday when we're in our new facility, we want to do this again. Well, we're here, and this is the year. We're going to do it again. It's called A Portrait of Love. It's, it's um, a story of the life of Jesus and, and passion of Jesus um, told through, through music, through dance. Um, there's participation in it, um, uh, time for... Uh, reflection, time for communion, all of that is part of, of that evening. So I encourage you, uh, Good Friday, um, come that evening and let's just enter into this season. You know, Easter time so often comes, it passes us by, you know. Uh, yes, we see the beautiful flowers, we celebrate that spring is com coming, but what does God want to do in our hearts? One of the best ways to celebrate that is to, to dramatize it, to act it out and participate in that. So we look forward to that. Invite people that you know to come. We'll have a much bigger venue this year, so we'll have room for many more people to participate and uh, be a part of that. We, uh, if I could have the ushers come to 
received the offering this morning, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a special guest with us, Aaron Durstein. Um, I called Aaron, uh, what was it, two weeks ago. I, I texted him because I heard that he was going to be in the area, and the suggestion was that perhaps he could minister in music while he's here. And I mentioned to him that uh, it was on my heart to do a special communion service and to do it a little bit differently, and uh, I'll explain more about that. Uh, but then I mentioned to him that um, the passage that was on my heart was John chapter 6 and, and uh, a little bit some of the thoughts that God was giving me. And Aaron mentioned to me, he says, you know what? He says, I have just preached that sermon. He says, uh, you know, God gave me this message that I've been sharing in churches, and, and that's, that is the message. So after thinking about it and praying about it some more, uh, as Pastor Kurt's preparing to go to Moldova, you're going to be hearing from me more in the coming weeks. So I said, you know what, this one, this one is for Aaron because God's give, already given him the word. And uh, so we're going to hear from him and then we're going to uh, participate in communion together. First, let's uh, lift up our tithes and offerings to the Lord as well as our prayer requests. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for what you are doing throughout the earth. We thank you, Lord, that, that your gospel is spreading and your glory is growing. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of participating in that. We lift up our prayer request to you this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would extend the power and the authority of your kingdom towards each and every need, towards each and every request. We thank you for the blessing of being able to participate through our tithes and offerings, through the giving of ourselves in the work of ministry. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We commit this time to you, the word that Aaron brings and all that we do here this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity of participating in your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Aaron, if you would come, we're going to, I've asked Aaron to share the message. It's going to be, I guess we're going to do it a little, a, a truncated version of this. And uh, then I'll come again, and we're going to move into a time of, of communion. Um, you know, we usually only have two tables here at the front, but we have four this morning. That's because we're going to be um, moving out of our seats to do this this morning and taking a little bit time to to just savor that time together but first we're going to have Aaron bring a word that the Lord has laid on his heart to prepare our hearts for communion all right well thank you so much Pastor Joel good morning everybody that was pretty good that was pretty good of first try let's do it again good morning all right everybody's awake Awesome. It's good to be here and um, just so excited to be back home with Hopewell. Um, it always just feels like home as soon as we walk in the door. And um, we live in Buffalo, New York, for those of you who don't know. So it's always good to come down to this region to escape the snow. Um, we have experienced the melting. The spring is, is on its way, so we're thankful for that. Um, but bring greetings from Eagle's Wings and from Robert Stearns, our director, and the whole team. I know many of you know the Eagle Swings team through the years, and um, just consider you to be just wonderful friends and family in God's kingdom. So it was just such a great honor to be here, to be with you today. And my wife, Caitlin, and little uh, son, Ethan, are here somewhere. I'm not sure if they're actually in the sanctuary at the moment, but um, you can um, greet them later. I know we're just all just happy to be here. And uh, for those of you who love the family updates, um, Ethan is um, going on 20 months, um, so he's a little over a year and a half now, and he's running everywhere. If you didn't see him yet, he was running everywhere around the sanctuary. It's his favorite part of worship is running. So um, he's our little track and field star, so, um, but we are just so thankful for what God is doing. Um, as we're serving with Eagle's Wings, um, we're really seeing the Lord do a lot in the areas of touching Israel. Um, and the nations, and especially with the message of God's covenant with Israel. As you've just had here, the Night to Honor Israel, we were so excited that that happened here at Hopewell. And um, also training up the next generation is one of our real focal points. So we have a school of ministry um, up in Buffalo, New York, um, at the church there, the Tabernacle, and in conjunction with Eagle's Wings. And um, also 
um, uniting the body of Christ to really make a difference in their community. So in Buffalo, in New York City, other cities around the nation, our heart really is to see the believers come together because there's so much more that unites us than what divides us. And in this hour, we really need to stand together. Can, I say, can anybody say amen to that? So it's one of our real focal points. Um, and, um, you know, we're seeing the Lord do so much in bringing his people together, those who have that burning heart um, for his presence. Like I know so many, as we're coming together here in worship, just this congregation we've seen time and time again, just pressing into the presence of the Lord, pressing in, say, we got to touch the Lord. If we're not going to do anything else. We just need to touch him. Amen? And um, so it's such a great honor to be with you and to share um, this word that the Lord has put on my heart as of late. Um, one of our particular roles in the ministry team um, my wife and I, is to raise the, our voices on behalf of the persecuted church in the Middle East um, that is suffer, suffering a lot um, under the hand of radical Islam. Um, and um, it's, it's really an hour for prayer. It's an hour for vigilance um, in the spirit. And so this is one of the things that we um, really um, have a role in sharing about that. And so I'll be talking a little bit about that this morning, even as I'm sharing from John chapter 6. Um, and so the title that I've selected for this is Feasting on Jesus, Food in Days of Persecution. Because these are increasingly um, momentous days that we're living in. We're seeing it in Israel. Our work in Israel continually um, is that um, Israel needs friends. <laughs> and the Evangelical Christian Church has really come alongside Israel in that. And um, we're seeing just an amazing openness. And Pastor Joel, of course, was just in Israel as well. And um, and just seeing what God is doing to bring our communities together in this hour is so, so vital and so important. And um, so um, with those thoughts in mind, I encourage you to turn to John chapter 6 this morning. And we're just going to hear a word from the Lord this morning of what Jesus is saying to us in this hour. Just as he spoke to his disciples and those who followed him um, at that time. So as we begin, I just would like to pray and ask the Lord just to speak to us this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Father, we thank you that you are real and that you are in this place this morning. And when we gather together, Lord, it's, uh, it's you are in the midst. And Lord, we know we're not just biding time, but Lord, you are present. And so, Lord, our hearts are here with expectation to meet with you. As we come around your word now, Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts to receive a fresh touch from you. Lord, we thank you for who you are, Jesus, that you gave your life for us. We thank you for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so why don't we just dive right in. John chapter 6 um, is, picks up when Jesus had just ministered and fed the 5,000. And if you go to Israel today, you can see um, the, the approximate area where they expect that that took place. It just brings it to life, and you can see um, just how real our faith is. And so Jesus had performed this miracle of feeding the 5,000, and then he got in the boat, and he crossed the Sea of Galilee to the other side, and the crowds followed him over there because of this amazing sign and wonder that he had just done. And he began to use that as a teaching moment to share about his ministry, what um, the Father had sent him to do on the earth. And if we pick up in verse 48 of John chapter 6, Jesus says this, I am the bread of life. And we could just stop right there and camp out for a while on that one. Such rich in meaning. Um, but he goes on to say, Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. 
This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Powerful words from our Savior. And I was just captured just in recent weeks with this verse 57. It says this, as the, fa- as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. And so I began to just meditate on what does it mean to feed on the Lord? What does it mean to actually feed on Jesus? Or I love to say feast on Jesus because he prepares a banquet table for us, doesn't he? It's not just a little appetizer, but when you come to the Lord's presence, he lays out a banquet. And there's a richness to being with him and in his presence. And Psalm 23, 5 actually says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And it's just amazing when you meditate on these words that that Jesus says, come and feed on me, come and feast on me. And even in the very presence of all that would come against you, he has for us an encounter with him continually. And he says that at that place, he's going to fill us. You know, it came to me to say it this way, that fear threatens, you know, fear from our enemies threatens, but fellowship sustains When we come into a place of fellowship with the Lord, it sustains us, and it just trumps all of the fears, all of the anxieties, all the worries, even fears for our safety. And this is what we see with those who are in the areas of the persecuted church, just standing with such courage, and you say, where did they get that? And I believe that it's in fellowship with Jesus. They have tasted of something that is more powerful than any fear, anything that will come against in this hour. So God has an encounter for us. Jesus wants to meet us at his table, and even as we're here this morning, he he wants to encounter us at this table. He wants to give us himself. You know, I think of uh, in Acts chapter 5 when the apostles um, were ministering, and they were brought before the courts, and they said, you have to stop speaking in this name. And they said, we can't help but speak in this name. It's like it just flows out of us, so we can't stop talking about this Jesus. And then the one leader, Gamaliel, he spoke to the other leaders, and he said, now let's, let's think about this for a moment. Don't try to stop what they're doing, because if it's of man, it's just going to fade away. But he said, if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it. And so he said, what can we do? Just allow them to continue what they're going to do. Because if we try to fight against them and the Lord is with them, there's nothing that we can do. And... I just think of that courage that comes from fellowship with the Lord when I think of feeding on him and feasting on him. What is food? Just put that question to you this morning. I love food. Does anybody love food? Oh my goodness. It's just, um, I love trying things. You know, when we go to restaurants, I'm the one who just branches out and gets something totally, you know, off the wall just because I want to try it, you know? And um, I just love tastes of different cultures and ethnicities and just the variety that that we can experience. And isn't it amazing how God made food in such a way that we enjoy it? Because it actually, it gives life to us. I looked up what what is food, you know, in Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and it's something that furnishes energy or nourishes, sustains, or supplies. Those are some really great words to think about and to ponder on. Something that actually furnishes energy. It gives us life. So I want to give a few points this morning that uh, I encourage you to jot down and just take and meditate on. It's from this passage, you know, that Jesus says, He who feeds on me will live because of me. The first point I want to give this morning is that to feed on Jesus is to take his life into you as desperately as physical food. To feed on Jesus is to take, or to feast on Jesus, you could say, is to take his life into you as desperately as physical food. You know, I read a book called The Heavenly Man, and I don't know if any of you have ever heard of that, but Brother Yun, the leader of, one of the leaders of the underground church in China, spoke about his personal testimony when he was just a very, very young boy, and he had such a hunger for the Word of God, and he had a dream, and it was this vivid dream, and he could almost just taste it. And what happened in the dream was these men brought him these loaves of freshly baked bread, and it was the most delicious bread he had ever tasted in his life. And he woke up and he knew 
that what the dream was referring to was his, his desire and appetite for the Bible and for the Word of God. And he was assured in his heart that that day someone was going to bring him a Bible to his door. It was that living of, of a revelation. And sure enough, what happened was someone came and knocked on the door, and without even seeing their face, he said, have you brought the bread? Because he knew that they had brought it to him. And what a picture of the nourishment that we take in when we feed on. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the bread of life. When we take him into ourselves, we are nourished, we are strengthened. And I thought to, to say it this way, is that what famine will do to physical food sources, so persecution tries to do to spiritual food sources. It's like, if we can just take away the, the, the nourishment then these people will die off. But the word says that if God is for us, who can be against us? Right? So he comes and miraculously provides, even in the place where we would think there would be lack. He provides a banqueting table, even in the presence of our enemies, the nourishment, the strength for life that we need. The second point I want to give this morning is we are profoundly linked to our brothers and sisters suffering for their faith around the world. We are profoundly linked to our brothers and sisters suffering for their faith. In just the last decade, as of a few years ago, the, the last decade, three, there was an increase of 309% in persecution attacks against Christians in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. In 10 years, it rose 309%, tripled what it had been. And there have been more Christians martyred in the last century than all previous centuries combined. Can you believe that? There have been more Christians martyred in the last century than all previous centuries combined since Jesus walked the earth. So we are living in an intense, intense time. And the largest percentage of that persecution, just to kind of focus in our prayers, is the Muslim world. Open Doors Ministries releases every year a world watch list of persecuted areas, and the most recent one from 2016 um, said that 11 of the top 12 nations were Muslim countries in the Middle East and Africa. So this is, this is the, the intensity and focus in places like Syria and Iraq and Egypt. Our brothers and sisters have been suffering greatly, but through feeding on Jesus— these Christians are coming to the place of remembering what true food really is. And in many ways, there are several steps ahead of us in what it is to follow the Lord because they have experienced that desperation that I was talking about. And I encourage you, go home this afternoon and get on, get on your computer and look up the girl who forgave ISIS and just look for a video. If you haven't seen this, it's just remarkable. A young girl whose family was driven out of their city, their homeland, for years and years— um, because Iraq used to be a Christian and Jewish nation before Islam in the, seventh, in the 8th century. And so they had been there for years and years in the, in the town of Karakosh in Iraq. And they were in a safe area now, um, but very, very, you know, meager supplies. Um, and in that place, she said, she, she was asked, you know, do you forgive? Yes, we forgive ISIS. Why? Because of the love of Jesus is in our hearts. And he tells us to forgive. And this is like a nine or ten year old girl saying this. And it's just the amazement to me of those who have learned to feed on the Lord. So just moving along, the, the third point I wanted to give is that Jesus imparted the ability to overcome persecution before it came by giving himself. Jesus imparted the ability to overcome persecution before it came by giving himself the very best he had, Jesus gave to us. John six thirty three says it this way, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That's what Jesus said about himself, giving life to the world. And John sixteen thirty three says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And he knew what his disciples would have to face. He knew that he was calling them to a road that was not easy. But he said, I've already given you the strength to overcome before the enemies come against you. I'm giving you my very self, the best that I have. And just think about it for a moment. 
Jesus giving the best that he has. Jesus has everything, <laughs> and he gave us the best. He gives us himself. And the last point I wanted to give is that to feed on Jesus, or to feast on Jesus, requires not feeding on the things of this world. I learned this as a new father, that when you're trying to get your son or daughter to eat something, if they have a toy in their mouth at the same time, it doesn't work so well. So you have to, you have to unplug from the one thing in order to receive the other. And so I want to encourage you with that, with just that encouragement. How hungry are you for the Lord? What are you feeding on? And I'm speaking to myself this morning too. When we enter into things like prayer and fasting, it actually releases power over sin because when it's done in fellowship with Jesus, we're seeing what is the greater reality, the greater strength, the greater food source. And we begin to plug into that. It's not so much about what you're unplugging from, but in the end, what you're plugging into. Fasting is not that, oh, I can't have this. Fasting is, look at the banquet table that's available for me. Because you're, you're making yourself available, just like this morning as we come to the table, to receive from Jesus in a fresh way. So let's plug into that food source. Let's, let's be desperate for the Lord. When he first got a hold of your life, remember how desperate you were for him at that moment. Let's recapture that desperation and run to him. You know, Jesus' message in John 6 was difficult for many to receive. It says from there, you know, what's this guy talking about? You know, how can we feed on his, his flesh and drink his blood? Like, that's a little out there, you know? And they began to, they began to leave him. And then he asked his disciples, where are, are you two going to go? Or, you know, are you going to stay? And they said, w you have the words of life. We believe that you are the one that was sent from the Lord. And so they stayed. But his, this was this invitation that he was giving in this moment, it was difficult for many to receive, but it was the invitation to the richest and most blessed life possible, intimate fellowship and communion with the Lord, and by extension with his body around the world. When we come to the table, we are connecting with our brothers and sisters around the world because we are taking of the body of Christ. We are receiving the body of Christ into ourselves, and his body is all over the world. Today, his body is suffering, but his body is also rejoicing because they're catching a glimpse of the true food source that would sustain and supply through every fear and trial. So that's the table that he's inviting us to this morning. He wants to give us himself so that we may pre be prepared to stand in the days to come no matter what we face and to be united with our brothers and sisters around the world. I want to give you a simple challenge Take a day sometime in the near future, maybe even this week, and just find the feast that many have found in Jesus. Take a day to fast and pray and say, Lord, I want to know you more like these ones who have found you in persecution and begin to find that same feast. And take that time also to pray for them who are under great persecution in the Muslim areas and in other areas around the world. Because God is greater, and he is going to give his people the strength to stand in this hour. And he wants to give us a feast like we've never had before when we begin to taste and see that he truly is good, and he is the best thing in the entire world. He gave us his best. Let's give him our best today and lay hold of who he truly is. Amen? Pastor Joel, would you come? Thank you, Aaron. Aaron is going to move to the piano where he's going to minister in music um, during this time of communion. If I could have the uh, elders come, we're going to have the elders serving from these tables here. The children from Children's Ministry are going to be returning um, at some point here. So uh, if families, if, if you know your children, if, if you want to uh, have them partake communion with you, there will be the opportunity to do that. Um, we've talked about doing this for some time. As a matter of fact, uh, one New Year's Eve uh, a couple of years ago, Lamar and Bonnie did this, uh, s actually served communion to us. We it took the time to do it, to come up in small groups, and to actually take time around the tables. Normally, we pass communion through the aisles. It's more of an individual 
experience, but we want this morning to be more of a corporate experience. So um, when we begin here, you can come up through the aisles to your stations here. There's four stations, one at, two at the head of this aisle, one at the head of each of, of these aisles. And, and I'd like you to come and we'll serve you in groups of about four to six people at a time. So that might be a family, it might be a couple of people together, it might, uh, it might be that the people next to you become your family for this morning, and we are the, the, the body of Christ. But to come and, and just to serve in small groups, and I've instructed the, uh, the elders um, not only to go through the normal uh, process of you know, reading the scripture, blessing uh, the bread and the wine and, and so forth, but also to just take time to pray blessing so it's a, a ministry time as well. And I want us to just take time to, to just savor this, to feast on Jesus. Uh, let's not be in a, in a hurry this morning, but let's just take time to, to take it in and to receive this together. Uh, I know that there are some people that may uh, not want to wait in line or might have difficulty uh, walking even this distance. My wife and I, Heidi and I, will be circulating and uh, if there's anyone that uh, would rather just receive communion where you are, uh, we'll, we'll be glad to serve you right where you are. And uh, so we, we want to include everybody that way. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to move into the uh, time of, of just uh, Aaron is going to lead us in a time of just meditative worship. I, Aaron, however the Lord leads, you know, if it's music, if it's music and song, if there's scriptures, whatever the Lord lays on, on your heart, Aaron, and we're just going to enter into this time of feasting on Jesus, meditating on Him, reflecting on Him, and, and um, then I'd encourage you to move up out of your seats, and like I said, in groups of about four to six people, gather around these tables. And um, we, the leadership of this church, are going to serve you. And we want you to just open your heart for this time. So, Lord, I, I ask your blessing as we feast on you, as we internalize these symbols, and they become more than just symbols to us. Lord, I pray that your life and your power would flow to us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, children are coming back into the sanctuary, so parents, maybe you want to just put up a, a hand or stand up so your children can find you. Here they come. And then um, as you're ready, just... Feel free to move up out of your seats to these tables. You know, if, if there ends up being a line in the aisle, it's okay. You can wait until the line goes down and then move up in line. We've, we've allowed time in the service for this. So um, let's just take our time and feast on Jesus as we enter into this time of communion together. When 
darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within His oath is covered and his blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay he then is all my hope and stay he then is all solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand and when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne, faultless to stand before the God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done Jesus my Messiah, oh, 
for sinners slain. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to
just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I Thank you for the cross, Lord, and thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Washed me in your cleansing flow. And now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. Son of God, the darling of heaven crucified, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Worthy is 
Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. King of all. 
He is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord of all, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Lord of Christ alone, Christ alone. 